If you're having trouble with jittery movement in Godot, this video will show you an easy way to fix it. This white box is a simple controllable character. I'm sure you've already got something similar to it. And in the script, I've got some movement code here in physics process. The first thing we need to do is go to project and project settings, scroll down, and under physics, click on common and take note of what your physics FPS value is. By default, this should be 60, but for the sake of this demo, I've got it set to 30. Whatever number you've got, just remember it because it will become important later. For various reasons, it's highly recommended to write movement code in physics process instead of process. But because physics process only updates 30 times a second, at least in my case, if you have a monitor with a higher refresh rate, your movement will look jittery because it's only updating its position 30 times a second, even though the game itself is running at 60 FPS or 144 FPS or whatever your monitor is capable of. The absolute easiest but incorrect way to fix this is to create a process function and move your move and slide function into it. This will result in extremely smooth movement, but it's got one huge problem, which is that physics process and process don't update at the same time. And so what can happen, especially if you have a sudden drop in frame rate, is that splitting up your movement code like this can cause your physics to just break completely. And this will happen way more often than you think. Instead, we're going to put move and slide back to physics process, and we're going to write var fps equals engine dot get frames per second. And this is just going to keep track of the FPS you're getting when running the game. Then we'll write var lerp interval equals, and then for my character controller, I use a vector three called direction to control the character's movement. And so we'll write direction divided by FPS. If your vector has a different name, use that instead of direction. Also, you can watch my video on character controllers if you don't know what I'm talking about. So let's say the direction vector is this long. If you're getting, say, 80 frames per second while playing the game, the direction vector will be divided by 80 to create a new vector called lerp interval that is an 80th the size of the direction vector. And I'll explain why we do this in just a second. Next, we'll write var lerp position equals global transform dot origin plus lerp interval. This takes the character's current position and adds the lerp interval to it, effectively saying if the game is running at 80 FPS, this is where the character should be on the very next frame. Our white cube character consists of two parts. The collision shape, which handles collisions, obviously, and a mesh instance, which is what you can see with your eyes. In the script, we need to get a reference to the mesh instance node by writing onReadyVar mesh equals dollar sign mesh instance. And then in process, we'll write if FPS is greater than 30. And remember, at the beginning of the video, I told you to remember what your physics FPS was. In my case, it was 30, and so here I'm writing 30. But if your physics FPS is 60 or some other number, make sure you use that number in instead. Then we'll write mesh.set as top level true. And then I'm going to expand this window since the next line is kind of long. And we're going to write mesh.globaltransform.origin equals mesh.globaltransform.origin.linearinterpolate lerp position comma 20 times delta. And basically what we're doing is separating the mesh instance from the character so that they move independently. And then we have the mesh follow along the same path the character controller is moving, but we're chopping up that path into tiny little segments based on how many frames per second we're getting, and then smoothly interpolating the position of the mesh along all the little segments so that the mesh appears to move smoothly from one position to the next, even though the character itself is only updating its position 30 times a second. I find that 20 is a good interpolation amount for 30 FPS, but you'll have to experiment with different numbers for your game. Then we'll write else mesh.globaltransform equals global transform mesh.set as top level false. And this is so that if your game FPS drops below the physics FPS of 30 or whatever you set it at, then it won't even bother doing all the interpolation because this is only a problem if your in-game FPS is higher than your physics FPS. Run the game and now your character has way less jitter. Back in the editor, if you go to debug and enable visible collision shapes, you'll see that the mesh instance is actually lagging behind the character controller by a tiny amount. Unfortunately, I don't know of any way to avoid this. Jitter is a common problem in every game engine, and using interpolation to deal with it will inevitably introduce a small amount of input lag. You can reduce this by changing the interpolation amount to a bigger number, but it will result in more jitter. The only way to reduce input 
lag while keeping smooth movement is to increase your physics FPS, and so you'll just have to experiment with it to find a good balance for your game. And you can do this jitter reduction for all kinds of things, not just meshes, and I find it especially useful to do it for the camera in first person shooters because jitter is really noticeable in that perspective. Anyways, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, bell, links to the discord and twitter down below, and as always, have a nice day.